Hello, welcome to this week's A Disciple's Point of View. And what I want to talk about today is something that is kind of born out of my interactions with people on social media, namely Twitter. Uh, Christian Twitter, as I call it, is really an interesting place, and you will see a diversity of belief and whatnot. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about what you must believe and what you must not believe to be considered a Christian and saved in the eyes of God from your sins or the consequences of your sin. Right. We know as Christians that once we sin, we are basically cast away from the presence of God forever and ever unless God does something on our behalf. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says the soul that sins shall die. So basically, even just that sin one time, which many of us probably have committed when we were children, when we said no to our parents, basically, we violated then one of the Ten Commandments that says, honor your father and mother. And if we tell them no and we disobey them, we have dishonored our father and mother and we are forever then separated from the presence of God unless God does something on our behalf. If he dies on the cross and if he dies for the consequences and totality of our sins, being that he is God in the flesh and his sacrifice is infinite, then we know that if he indeed raised from the dead three days later, which we believe that he did, and I believe that he did, and that we put our faith and trust in that finished work and that God is the one who saves us, that is the basics of what one needs to believe in order to be saved, period. Ipso facto, that's really all you need, right? And to me, it sounded very much too good to be true whenever I first got saved. I remember sitting there going, what else do I have to do? And my friend said, nothing. And I was like, how could this be, right? It seemed too good to be true. But then you start reading through the New Testament. And yes, there is outgrowth of Christian life that should take place if your salvation is genuine. But it doesn't necessarily save you save you at all. It just makes you and shows who you truly are. It's almost like the litmus test for the believer. Um, in James uh, chapter 2, it does say uh, that we're saved by what we do and not by faith alone. And that sounds like a contradiction until you look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, for we are God's workmanship created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I believe it harmonizes perfectly. It's like, you know, no. Works is a litmus test for the believer, right? A natural Christian outgrowth will result in works, right? However, do we have to believe in X uh, doctrine or this doctrine or this doctrine or this doctrine? And we start getting really legalistic with stuff and we start developing cults and whatnot if we say you have to believe this over this or this or this. I think the most preeminent thing that I can think of that causes so much division in the church right now, at least on Christian Twitter, is the concept and doctrine of the rapture. And that's basically where God will take his people out of the way and gather them unto himself. There is debate about when that is going to take place. There are about four predominant views, right? And even pastors are divided on this because there is a study that was done, or a poll rather, that was done in 2016 by Lifeway Research. And basically, they polled a thousand pastors across uh, the United States, I believe, and basically said, what do you believe about the doctrine of the rapture? And when do you think it's going to take place? A third believed that it was going to be the pre-tribulational rapture. About 18% believed it was going to be post. Another 25% didn't have any kind of particular view, mostly because of the crazy division that takes place because of it. And they're probably not wanting to see their churches split. And another 4% um, believed in some sort of mid-tribulational or various views. The most predominant one is either A, I don't have a particular position, or B, the pre-trib rapture. That comprises about 55 to 60% of those polled. And you can bet that if the pastors believe that, a good part of their congregants are going to believe it too, because a lot of times the tone of the church is set by the pastor. I mean, it's just how it is. It's just how people are. Anyway, that's the reason why they call a pastor an overseer or a shepherd, right? And it's not the shepherd of Jesus Christ, but it is one who Jesus Christ appoints and calls to lead a particular, particular rather congregation. But does this necessarily mean we have to believe in one timing of the rapture over another? No. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't matter what timing of the rapture you believe in. I've had many a people tell me basically that I'm not saved and that I'm a heretic and that I'm teaching heresy and I'm going to cause people to fall away and whatnot. I would say to that person that they don't have much confidence in God. In Jude uh, verses 24 and 25, it basically says God is able to present you to himself. 
He who began a good work in you will continue to do so until the day of Christ Jesus. He is going to be the one to save you, first of all, and then he's going to keep you, and then he is going to present you before himself. We're not, I mean, you know, we do strive, right? We do, again, like I said earlier, show works to show who we are. That doesn't necessarily save us. God is working within us the whole time to bring us to himself. So honestly, I have to say we need to stop letting these secondary, what I call secondary issues, divide us so much. And we need to come together as a body and truly proclaim Jesus Christ to the world and start loving each other instead of being so divided. And that's my thoughts on that. At this point in the podcast, I want to reach out to you. And if you have never done so, if you have never entered into a saving relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to do that today. All you need to do is believe. Believe that Jesus was who he said he was. He was God in the flesh. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. Confess him as Lord. And the Bible says that you will be saved if you do that. If you truly believe in your heart that Jesus is who he said he was and that he did exactly what he said he would do for you, you will be saved. It is simply that easy. A lot of people say prayer, prayer. And that's great to confess and put your mind and your heart and everything through a process, if you will, to be able to embody what's already taken place in your heart. By simply saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. And now I confess you as Lord. Please take control of my life. And I want to follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. That's all you need to do. And your life will change. Your life will change, not necessarily materially, not necessarily in terms of the world. But your life will change as far as your relationship with God. And you can know for certain that you're saved. The Apostle John wrote that when he was pinning 1 John. He says, I write these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you can hope, not that you can wonder, but that you can know. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast.